<clears throat> this will be a basic introduction to our lathe in our lab room. And this is a Sherline lathe. Uh, has all the same kind of functions as a, as a full-size lathe. Made by the same company that uh, makes our, our mill that you've been using. So, uh, the first thing I want to say is that safety is extremely important here. Make sure you have no loose clothing or jewelry that could be pulled into the machine. Also, long hair will have to be tied back. When you're operating the machine, uh, just like with the mill, make sure you remove any tools that you've used for, for tightening. Uh, so that the machine doesn't start up with those tools still in place. Uh, watch out for the chips that you're creating. Uh, the chips will be sharp, they could be long, um, and in some cases they could be hot. So just watch out for that. And then also when you turn the machine off, make sure you let it coast to a complete stop before you try to um, make any adjustment or reach into the machine or the part. Okay, and let's watch out for each other, too, uh, on safety. And as always, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. All right, so let's just talk about the, the different parts uh, of the lathe. Okay, so along the length of the lathe is called the bed. So this, this is a 17-inch bed, and it reaches all the way from, from one end to the other using for mounting components. The left side of the lathe is called the headstock. So the headstock is what's turned by the, by the motor and the drive belt, and also where we would typically mount the, the chucks. And then we have, on the right-hand side, we have the tailstock. And the tailstock uh, will, is used for a number of things, but we'll typically use it for is for mounting a drill chuck for drilling. And then the tailstock does uh, move along the bed and there is a a screw for, for tightening it in place. And then we also have something called a cross slide and our tools will be mounted on the cross slide and there's a hand wheel for moving it in and out. Now, come and, and um, the next issue is the axes. You know, on the on the milling machine, we have the X, Y, and Z axes. So, in this uh, lathe, we have two axes. Along the lathe, along the bed, is the Z axis going into and out of the part, and then also we have the X axis, the cross slide moving in and out in this direction is the x-axis. And then we do not have a y-axis, so it's just x and z. A feature we have with the lathe that we don't have with the mill is we have a digital readout. So back here we have uh, a digital readout that will show us axis location and the spindle speed in RPM. You'll also notice there's a little bit of a, there's a little cardboard hood on here. The reason for that is we, as you know, we have very bright lights above us. So without that hood giving you a little bit of shade, it can cause trouble with um, the digital readout. On the X and the Z axes on the readout, it reads out to four decimal places. So in most cases, you're just ignoring the fourth decimal place. When we get to some high precision work. Um, then there may be some times when, like when you're when you're on the lathe, when you're turning, and you're trying to get a, a very precise result, you might um, use the fourth decimal place. Um, so anyway, just be aware of that. All right. So I think that's it for a description of the lathe. Now for a description of the cutting tools that we'll be using uh, on the lathe. Now your page 55 in the workbook 
has a really good description. This is a page out of a, a Sherline manual. So you'll notice figure 33 on page 55 in the workbook has a very good basic description of the different types of tools you'd be using and what their purpose is. There's another page on, in the workbook, page 58, which also is a, has a very good description. One of our students brought this in uh, a number of years ago because uh, he had a lathe at home and he really liked this page out of his manual. This is out of the Logan Lathe Operator's Manual. And it gives also, again, a very good uh, graphical description of the different types of tooling and what their purpose is on the lathe. So here's some of the tools that we'll be using. Now these tools on the lathe are what they call single point cutting tools, meaning that when you're when you're um, cutting the tool is only cutting at a single point as opposed to for instance uh, an end mill on the mill which will have uh, multiple um, cutting edges. So um, here's, an, here's an example part. Let me just uh, illustrate this. So this is what's called a right hand tool that's meant to cut from right to left. So you would use this tool if you were turning down a part from a, larger, from a large diameter to a smaller diameter. And you can see it's just going to cut right on that point. Now the way these tools are designed is that the, the tool tapers away from that point in all directions. So as long as you set up your tool properly on the lathe, you're only going to get cutting on that one point. So this is a right hand tool, cuts right to left. Here's a left hand tool which cuts left to right and we'll also mostly use it for what's called facing. So for instance this part will have a rough end and if you want to square up that end um, and remove some a little bit of material you can do what's called facing. So you use the left hand tool and you'll be cutting across the face of the part this way. That's a left hand tool. Uh, we also we also have a boring tool which we don't we won't use uh, in your engine project, uh, but it's a, like for instance if you've drilled a hole in the end of the part and you want to enlarge it, you can use this boring tool to bore into the part and uh, enlarge and finish off a a, a pre-drilled hole. Another tool that we will use is a called a parting tool. So for instance, if you were working this part and say you wanted to then uh, cut off this part at a certain length, then you could use this, um, this thin parting tool and go into the part and then it would just cut off the part at a length that you determine. This uh, particular parting tool is 40 thousandths, uh, has a 40 thousandths thickness. Here's another tool that you'll see described in the workbook that we're not going to use. Uh, this is for creating threads. So when we don't have the proper equipment to do this on our lathe, but you could use this tool to go down the part in a way that creates external threads. We'll create our external threads with a die. That, that's a separate process. Next we'll talk about um, how these tools are held in place while you're uh, turning. Now we'll just uh, talk briefly about how are you going to hold these tools. So we have what is called a tool post. So, so what you're going to do is you will uh, mount the tools in the tool post. This tool post happens to be a two tool post so you can mount one tool on either side. In this tool post we have a right-handed tool mounted on one side and a left-hand tool mounted on another. And then the tool post will fit in the... Let's bring this back a little bit. The, the tool post fits in the, the T-slot uh, of the, the cross slide. So that's typically where the tool will be, will be held. 
and then if we had multiple operations where we needed both a right hand tool and a left hand tool we can just rotate um, the different uh, necessary tools into place. The parting tool which is also sometimes called a cutoff tool has its own tool post of the right size to hold that uh, that parting tool. We also have a single a single tool tool post if we need it uh, it's not as flexible as the two tool post but uh, we also have that. If we're drilling then the way we, then we're going to use just our regular center drills and drills but the drill chuck will go uh, in the tailstock. Now one uh, feature of that you'll notice uh, which is the main difference between a lathe and a mill is when you're using your left and right hand tools and when you're using the parting tool and, or a boring tool the tool itself is not rotating unlike on a milling machine where uh, the end mill is doing the rotating and the part is stationary we have just the opposite here the the part that your machining is going to be rotating and the part and the tool itself is going to be stationary um, even even when you're drilling when you're when you're drilling uh, with your drill chuck and the tailstock the tailstock is not rotating so the drill is going to be stationary and the part again will be rotating now one thing that is important to check uh, for instance with the your turning tools uh, is the height of the tool the intention is that when I don't know if you can see this here let's turn this a little bit when you have your tools in the cross slide that the intention is that the that the cutting point, the single uh, point that's doing the cutting on the tool is at the same level as the center of the headstock or the center of the part. So we do have a tool height gauge that you can use to check uh, that you indeed have the cutting tool at the right. Now we'll talk about how we're going to actually mount the part on the lathe. So we're going to use chucks. Typically what we'll use is what's called a three-jaw chuck. All the jaws uh, move uh, simultaneously and you, you uh, open and close the jaws by, by turning the chuck. The chuck gets, is mounted on the spindle. So the, what's called the nose of the spindle is threaded matches the threads uh, on the three-jaw chuck. So you would be just turning the, the chuck onto the spindle nose. It'll typically always just be there. And then we have the same pins uh, that we use on the milling machine and then you'll be now it's important that this be tight so you'll tighten that down okay. and then again you can open and close uh, the jaws of the chuck and for tightening and loosening again you'll use these two bars for opening and closing On some occasions, you might need to use a four-jaw chuck. So we have this four-jaw chuck. So if you're if you're holding something that's not round, something that's either square or rectangular, for instance, like our cylinder, then you can use a four-jaw chuck. Now these jaws move independently. There's a uh, you use a hex key to move each one independently, so that the jaws can be in different uh, locations and they don't move. 
uh, uh, they're not synchronized to move at the same the same rate. Okay. And again, it screws right onto the uh, spindle nose. Now, this chuck that we have is called a reversible chuck. So you can actually reverse the jaws to accept, like right now it's set up for, I can't open it any more than about right there because if I open it any more, the back side of the jaws will uh, hit the bed as you're rotating. So there's a limit as to how big of a part. Now when we're doing the, um, the crank wheel for the steam engine, you can open up the jaws just enough and, and, and the jaws do clear the bed with that crank wheel in the three jaw chuck. But if you're going to mount anything larger, which you will have to, if you're going to put your cylinder, your uh, flywheel in here, then there's a process we have to go through to reverse the jaws of the chuck. And it's a process you have to follow very carefully so that when you put the, put the, the chuck back together, um, it still works. So, and we'll cover how to do that in, in class, uh, in lab, uh, probably in the upcoming weeks. Let's do a demonstration of several uh, operations on the lathe. So I'm going to demonstrate with a small piece of brass. This is a half inch diameter brass rod. So it, it'll be a um, perfect shape for the three jaw chuck. So I'll just load that up in the in the three jaw chuck like this. And you do want to have the chuck uh, tight so the part doesn't come loose while you're turning. So we'll tighten that down. Now this this piece was just cut off from a longer rod with a hacksaw so the, the ends kind of rough. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a facing operation to uh, clean up that end and give it a nice finish. So I have my two tool tool post in, in the cross slide and it has a right hand tool and a left hand tool. I'm going to use the left hand tool to turn uh, to cut across the face. So I'm going to bring that one into play like this and I'm going to have the tool in the center of the cross slide like that. Tighten it down. And we'll bring the cross, cross slide down to the part. And the first thing you want to do is we're going to touch off the end of the tool on the end of the part. And that will be our zero along the z-axis. And we can zero that on our digital readout. There's a button for z0. So I just want to know where the tool is. So that's at the end of the part, z0. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is we're just going to take a light cut along the end. So what we're going to be doing, the way we're going to control depth of cut is with our z-axis. So I'm going to, going to bring this down to maybe about, let's do about a five thousandths depth of cut. Now since we're turning, we're only going to bring the tool into the center of the part. And by the time you get to the center of the part, because the part is turning, then you'll have faced off the whole end. And the controls for the lathe are the same as the, as the mill, uh, the, the on-off and the speed control. And actually, they're in a little better place. They're kind of more out of the way than on the mill. Okay, so here we go. And we also have RPM display uh, for the spindle. Okay, so I'm going to come up to around 1100 RPM or so, and then I'm going to control the. Let me go back to 5000. Got a little ahead of myself. So we have 5000 depth of cut, and we'll cut across with the X hand wheel.
And once I once the tool got to the center, then the end was faced. Now you then have to inspect the part. I can see that there's still a little bit of uh, of the end that was not faced because it was really out of square. So I'm going to uh, take another three thousandths just to finish up that end. All right, and then we have a nice, nice finish on that end. Now. Let's say, for instance, now I want, this is a half inch diameter, let's say I wanted to take that half inch diameter down to, uh, let's say my drawing says I needed 400 thousandths diameter. So I'm going to go from 500 thousandths to 400 thousandths. Now one thing about turning is that since the part's rotating, if you're turning the diameter down with your right hand tool, your diameter is going to be reduced twice as much as your depth of cut. So if I want to reduce that diameter by 100 thousandths, I can only have a depth of cut along the x-axis of half of that. And I don't want to take it all at once. Uh, I would prefer to take a cut, measure the part in place, and then determine a, a final cut. So in order to do that, then you have to bring now the, bring the right hand tool into place. Again, have your cutting point about in the center of the cross slide. And since we've moved the tool, we're going to have to zero, zero Z again, Z axis with the tool on the end of the part and press that button on the digital readout. And then now we also have to find our zero on the X axis. So you bring the tool down along the end of the part and then and bring it in until you make contact with the part. And then that is zero in your X axis. So now, so I'm going to I'm going to just uh, suppose that I'm supposed to go to 400 thousandths, and I need to cut down half inch down along the part. So I'm not going to take all 50 thousandths. Uh, I might take I'll take maybe a 30 thousandths, um, say depth of cut in the x axis. I'm going to go down to my digital readout is 30, and then I'm going to um, uh, bring the tool down along the part until my z-axis now reads uh, a half inch or 0 0.500. So I'm 500 thousandths, back this off a little bit, so I'm only going to make that one cut, but I'll show you what you need to do before you make your next cut. So now what you have to do, you can measure in place to see what your diameter is now and determine what your, your next cut is going to be. You can use calipers. Uh, to measure this. Uh, you have to be very careful though, make sure your jaws are aligned. You can wiggle the calipers back and forth and, and wherever you get, whatever the lowest reading is, that's, that's your reading. So this is set telling me now it's 0.438, which is about what I would expect. But for lathe work, what you really need to be using is a micrometer I believe you're going to get some instruction in that in class. So you're going to use a micrometer and you'll be measuring the micrometer this way. In order for me to read it, I would need to get my um, magnifying glass. Okay. So you're going to, you know, so again, you'll get instruction how to read that. So typically what we'll do is we'll read with a micrometer first and then if you're wondering whether you've read the micrometer correctly, you can always back that up with calipers just to verify that you were 
reading the micrometer correctly. Then you'd have to do another calculation to see what your next depth of cut is. Another operation that we'll perform, let's, for, let's say for instance this part actually was done now, then there's a sharp edge on the end of the part, so we can deburr that with the lathe uh, by putting a, a chamfer on the end. So what we could do is rotate the tool post to 45 degree angle like this and then we can apply the, uh, the chamfer uh, with the side of the part. So I've got the tool post rotated 45 degrees and then I'm going to come in there and turn it a little bit more here. And then I'm just going to come in here and just do a light, a light cut on the edge. And now I have a chamfered, a chamfered edge. All right, so that shows you facing and uh, turning, and then uh, we'll um, we'll actually cover drilling uh, once we get into uh, uh, lab. All right, I changed my mind. Let's do a couple minutes on drilling. So for drilling, we're going to mount the drill chuck in the tailstock. Uh, this, this drill chuck has a number zero Morse taper. You can see the Morse tapers in the machinery's handbook. So this uh, tailstock has a zero internal Morse taper. The headstock has uh, a number one. So we're going to mount this drill chuck in the tailstock and then turn the hand wheel to lock it in. And while I'm doing this, I have um, snugged up the set screw so the tailstock doesn't move while I'm mounting the drill chuck. Now, we've talked in the past about what, what needs to be tight and what doesn't need to be tight. Now, this screw on the tailstock does not need to be tight. You can just, just snug it and you're done. You don't need to crank down on it. Just, uh, just a little bit of uh, tightening will make sure the tailstock doesn't move. But now that we have mounted the drill chuck, now you'll also notice that I've moved the cross slide out of the way just to get it out of the way uh, so the tailstock can come in towards the part. So I have my center drill. I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole into this part. So we'll do use the center drill first. Once you've moved the tailstock, again you just snug down uh, the screw on the tailstock and the guidance for drilling is going to be the same as we've done before but again what you'll notice is the, dr the, the drill chucks not rotating but the part is. Okay so let's do that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to control the, the depth um, with the hand wheel on the tailstock. So that's our that's the center drill, and next we'll drill. Now we'll finish drilling a quarter inch hole through the center of this part. So I have the quarter inch drill uh, mounted in the drill chuck. Uh, we'll bring that drill up to the end of the part. Apply a drop of cutting oil. I'm going to. Now, this part was turned down a half inch. I want to drill a little bit more than that. So let's say I wanted to drill down, say, six tenths of an inch. Uh, and the, what we're going to use for the drill, again, is the hand wheel on the tailstock, which has, uh, which goes, um, moves 50 thousandths for every turn, just like the hand wheels on the mill. So I can set my hand wheel to zero. And the tailstock is not connected to the digital readout, so we'll just be using this manual hand wheel. So if I want to go six tenths um, deep into the part, I'm going to use 12 turns, so I can just count the, the turns on the, um, on the hand wheel, occasionally um, doing some peck drilling.
Okay, so there's our quarter inch hole drilled through the part. And then if my drawing uh, asked for this part to be a half inch long, then I could then use the parting tool, mount that in the cross slide, and then just move into the part um, to cut the, the, uh, the part off at, at that uh, length.